this week on the Unpopular Opinion Show. They just found out that that jingle is racist as hell. Is this just an empty gesture? Uh, it might stop you from whistling that tune. You can't win an argument with a black woman. You are not above the law. No one is above the law. You let it burn. <laughs> okay, Usher. I have some sort of lopsided titty on my elbow. I woke up in midair one night. Your mama and your wife ain't supposed to be in the same conversation. Not like that. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. Who gives a fuck? I don't care if personally hit Candace Owens and her stinky cray cray. No good thing starts with, I was thinking about my ex. He ain't learned his lesson. That's a brother ain't gonna learn shit. I know this is gonna be all about you and I don't care. Let's keep this shit funky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about now? One, two, one, two. Yeah. Okay, good thing I'm smarter than I look. <laughs> it's technology shit, boy. It's That's why they pay motherfuckers well. <laughs> for Real talk, you know, man. Getting back into doing this made me realize how technology passed me by and I didn't even see it. Right. I, I thought I was up on shit. And then we started doing this and I'm like, uh, I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. Um, wow. Oh, okay. Anyway, while we're waiting on um positive K, let's talk about this 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 thing with the RZA. Okay. Yes. You heard about uh so Good Humor, the ice cream company that, you know, everybody's known all their lives for the, you know, the, the trucks. Actually, they stopped doing ice cream trucks, I think, back in like the late 70s. But uh, they would have the ice cream trucks coming through the neighborhood, selling the ice cream, and they would play the little jingle, right? right. Well, they just found out that that jingle is racist as hell. Um, and I just found just, out today when I saw the story. They just found out, or did they just, you know, cop to how racist it actually is? Well, what they said was they were they were made aware of it. Um, and yeah. you know, I have no reason to disbelieve that they were made aware of it, right? Um, a major corporation, you know denying they knew something hmm. Hmm. <laughs> who would have thunk it i mean that's not like they would deny any you know knowledge of some controversial information i mean like what would they have to lose <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying the uh the good humor ceo and the owner of the redskins uh be hanging out on the weekends <laughs> And it's good, it's good humor, so they thought the shit was funny. <laughs> well, that song, it was yeah. brought to their attention. They, um, they enlisted the help of RZA from Wu-Tang Clan to remix the ice cream jingle. Uh, mm. Have you heard it? I haven't heard the jingle, no. Uh, if I'm, let me see if if I play this, if you can hear it. What's it called? No, you can't hear. It? No, no. Right. I'm gonna email it to you. Uh, it's called "Good Humor" by RZA, a new ice cream jingle or whatever. I found it.
I dig it. Yeah. He, he, he put a little street on it. Now he said um, he wanted to make a jingle that could last forever. And, you know, it, it would cross over and it's not just for black kids or, or people of color. It's for all races. And when I heard the first jingles, I was like the little bells. I was like, OK, then that 808 dropped in. <laughs> Now, are the so the question is: Are the ice cream trucks going to be equipped so people can enjoy all the, the sonic nutrients that are in? You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, they they probably gonna have that horrible horn on the top of the truck. But and and here's the thing: like I I I think it's whether they knew it was racist before or not, the fact that they're changing it, I think, is cool. The fact that they got RZA to do it, I think is really cool because RZA is one of my all-time favorite hip-hop producers. But how are they realistically going to get this out? They freely admit they don't operate ice cream trucks anymore. They haven't since 1976. So they can suggest that all the other companies use it. But other than that, what can they I guess, I mean, well, people still buying ice cream from them and, and vendors, because I think a lot of the trucks are, you know, privately owned. Yeah. Um, that could be a part of the package. Buy the ice cream, here's and jingle. And if you don't run this jingle. <laughs> ice cream will cost you a little more. Get a, cost- you get a discount by running this jingle. That would be, I think that would be. Smart. That would be. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just an empty gesture. Uh, Again, major corporation. I mean, it's not like they would deny any knowledge of some controversial information. It's, that's not. It's not like they would do something like that. By the way, this is called. <laughs> this is. This is my version of sarcasm. Of course, they fucking knew it. They knew this shit. They knew this shit twenty years ago, and it's good humor. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know the sort of song, I'll just the it's nigga wanna was it nigga love a watermelon ha 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 nigga wanna love ha ha it's come on son. <laughs> and then it, it actually goes deeper than that. It, it, so when I saw that because you know admittedly and I I hate looking like I'm just don't know shit <laughs> like I ain't woke but um. I had no idea. So I decided to kind of do a little bit of a dive into it this morning. And I can't remember the the guy's name, but it was a, it was a tune that was popular, popular for minstrel shows, a lot of black mm-hmm. faith. And uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, something coon or somebody coon. Uh, he became really popular for it. Old zip coon. Yeah. So it, it's got a pretty wait, messy. Wait. Wow. Yes. Old Zip Coon. Is that the artist or like? So Zip Coon was the, the minstrel guy who sang the song, right? Of, right. Blackface, that whole deal. Um, now, it's questionable as to who actually originally wrote the song. It's a lot of people it's attributed to, uh, and even the tune was borrowed, I think, from uh, um, Irish folk music or whatever. So the tune in and of itself, it was a banjo tune. So the tune in and of itself wasn't racist. It was when it got to the South, when they was like, you know what would be funny, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and they start coming up with racist lyrics for these songs. Recorded it. There's an actual, I heard the record for it. It was years later. Yeah, it's. So I invite everybody to, um, uh, the the name of their tune is Turkey in the Straw. If you Google that, um, Wikipedia actually has some pretty good information on it. And there's some other articles out there. But I invite everybody to kind of get a little education on that. Because uh, if you didn't already know, uh, it might stop you from whistling that tune. (laughs) <laughs> just maybe like you not. stop singing R. Kelly songs yeah, or, or maybe not there's so many people that still still ride with you know with Robert <laughs> when 
I um I did a mix recently and I, I played uh Age Ain't Nothing But a Number remix by Aaliyah. And I, that's probably the first time I've played that song since uh all that R. Kelly stuff came out. It's just not a song I really play, but the the um focus of the mix was 90s RB. And I was like, oh, Aaliyah. And I put the song on and I'm listening to it and it just was icky. <laughs> it was like ah. cringy. Say it again. Super cringy. Oh yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. Like, I Hang on one second. Let me, let me let me let me let me make a change on here. One more, just one more change. All right. Can you hear me? So, yeah, I can hear you. You hear me well? I hear you well. Okay, excellent. All right, good. Good deal. Because now I can... Uh... All right. <laughs> Let's see. I'm tempted to uh, text homie. Say, uh... Where you at, homie? Of course, um, our good friend Paz will be the first guest to actually be late on some Carlos Perkins time. <laughs> that was pretty funny when when you was making that joke up and she was like, oh, you know him? Is that real? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's uh let's get some birthdays in here while we we waiting on uh pause. Uh Chris Kelly, rest in peace. Had a birthday last week. Can't hear you. You're completely gone now. Of Chris Cross, if you don't know his government name. <laughs> his government name. <laughs> Which one? So I always got to confuse. Was he was he Mac Daddy or Daddy Mac? I think it was Mac Daddy, right? I think so. I, I, and yeah, the dark skin one was Mac Daddy, and light skin Chris was Mac, uh, Daddy Mac. I don't even think they, they even cared which one you called who. <laughs> I actually went back and again doing the mix. I was playing nineties music, and I dropped some crisscross joints in there. They they actually could rap. Oh yeah. Like it wasn't no BS. They could rap. They could really rap. Yeah. Oh, I know uh, what I what I did. I know what I did. Hold on. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Teddy Riley happy right now. <laughs> Not just it ain't just me, niggas. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. <laughs> okay. Um I was a text from Paz. Let me see. Um, <laughs> okay. My bad, bro. Session all night. Damn, you got to remind me a day in advance. Sorry. Uh, reschedule and we on. Okay. So no pause today. All good? Yeah. All right. All right. So on with the show. Come on, Paz. On with the show. Uh, so uh, here, here's here's something very serious and very stupid. Um, in in Trump news, hang on, let me get it right. No, we we got to get it right because he almost has his own theme song. Okay, in Trump news, Trump is a bad president. Have you heard the latest birther? The new birther campaign, um, Mr. Orange Hazmat has um, unleashed. Orange Hazmat. No, I have not. Um, I, I unplugged, admittedly, unplugged on the back half of last week. So anything that uh, he did, I just I didn't hear about it. 
Well, this is f- hot off the press. So remember, um, before he started running for president, um, initially he joined in on the birth. He didn't start it, but he joined in on the birth movement about um, President Barack Obama, whether he was legitimately born in the United States or not. And, and we want to see a birth certificate and that, all that good stuff. He, he, he joined in on that, right? Very racist, very untrue. <laughs> well, here's the sequel. So I just heard that. I heard it today that she doesn't meet the requirements. Uh, and by the way, the lawyer that wrote that piece is a very highly qualified, very talented lawyer. I have no idea if that's right. I would have, th- I would have assumed the Democrats would have checked that out before she gets chosen to run for vice president. But that's a very serious. You're, you're saying that they're saying that she doesn't qualify because she wasn't born in this country. No, she was born in this country, but her parents did not. Uh, the claims say that her parents did not receive their permanent residence at that yeah. time. I don't know about it. I just heard about it. I'll take a look. So he just I love that. I love it. I just that guy. But you know, it's de- so, look. It's bullshit, right? But it was so well executed. I didn't say it. It just came to me the other day from an attorney. I guess the Democrats would have checked it out, but I don't know. Mm, I mean, what can you do? Uh, Plausible deniability. Yeah, Why? well, it's it's starting shit is what it is. It's like uh, junior high school rumors, you know. I heard Johnny pulled his pants down in the hallway and it never happened. And it just takes on a life of its own and people just grab it and run with it. It's look, they better not start muscling with that dude. <laughs> He's too good at it. He's too good at it. Uh, did you hear? So, and this is <laughs> what Bill Maher did some years ago that went along the same lines of the Bertha movement. It was a Bertha movement about um, uh, a Trump. I'm, I'll play some of it for you to hear, but I'm going to have to edit most of it out, folks. So you will put the link so you can hear it because I don't want any copyright infringement issues. But New rule, Donald Trump must immediately submit to DNA tests to determine... <laughs> to determine whether he is, in fact, the love child of a human woman and an orangutan from the Brooklyn Zoo. (laughs) He goes on. (laughs) He goes on to crack more jokes to say that no one humanly has that color hair. And, you know, and so you need to see your birth certificate. Make sure that you are 100% human. He sued him. (laughs) He actually sued. He replied with a lawsuit that he had to actually reply. That's how petty 45 is. But it's it's hilarious. Anybody that sues a comedian, like you don't, sues a comedian for telling a joke. That's their job to tell jokes. You just, you're the butt of the joke this time. You take the hit and you wait for him to move on to somebody else. In this case, every time. <laughs> well, every time. Because he's... So, okay. I'm sorry, well, folks. Got I'm, trying to so boxed. I'm trying not to be so deep. But God, come on, this motherfucker, boy. I tell you. That's when you know this shit is real. He just hit the but the motherfucker, I tell you. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's just, yeah, it's such bullshit. You know what I mean? And And... You know, he uh, he like Pence will learn. You can't win an argument with a black woman, and she gonna dig off in his ass. And when they lose, talking about uh, orangutan, uh, 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 orangutan in chief, uh, with him and the and 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 the ghostly, <laughs> call him BJ and the bear. Right, them two motherfuckers. When they get up out of there, I, I'm you know. He may not actually serve time, but he's going to be convicted on some shit. You think so? Yeah. You think yeah. Biden harder than him? Hell no. No. I think he will. You think he will? Yeah. 
Why? Because what kind of precedence would it set for uh, a former president to be brought up on charges and convicted and put in prison? It would set a horrible precedent. No, they, it would set a great, it would set, I, I, allow me, it would set a great precedent that you are not above the law. No one is above the law. He has actually committed crimes. I believe he's committed treason. I'm not the only one. He's, oh, I mean, and then his lawyer, the, the, his former lawyer, has a new book that's detailing saying that he was, he was very complicit in, you know, uh, working with the Russians to get elected. That's against the law. That's treason. And yeah. it's, with a, it's, when, it's with the U.S. It's the enemy of the state. Come on, man. Yeah. I, was it, great- um, I think the loyalty of those who hold that office and those offices, it's not to justice, um, the betterment of the lives of the people that they've been elected to serve, but to the office itself. And I don't think they're going to do anything to denigrate that office. I just don't see it happening across party lines within the part. I just don't see that happening. It's really kind of the same concept of blue supports blue, right? They just ain't going to arrest their own. I think this is different because, I mean, he's not their own. He's an outsider. He was not a politician. He was not in public service. He was, he's always, and he's, like I said, he, all the shit he's done in while in office. Now, Republicans will, you know, fight to keep him from being convicted. But, um, I mean, the, especially the ones that are complicit because it may, you know, reflect on them being convicted for some shit that they were a party of too. Um, but I, I can't see Biden saying, give, I can't see Biden giving them, giving them a pass. I don't see that. No, 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 no. Here's what I'm saying. I, I think something will happen, right? Like some charges, some investigation, something will happen. If, if the result of that is um, a conviction, sure. But I believe because he held the office of president and to uphold the status of that office, that the sitting president will pardon him. They can still let him be the scapegoat. He can still get charged. He can still get convicted. All of that can happen. But then on the back end, okay, here's your pardon. Mm. I would hope I not. I don't think they hate him more than they love the sanctity of the democracy that they put together or the, the, not the democracy. That's not the word I'm looking for. The bureaucracy. There it is. The bureaucracy that they put together. I just don't I think, trust him to be frank with you. <laughs> I, I think what kind of precedent that would set if to, to let him, I mean, Nixon was different. His vice president pardoned him. Mm-hmm. I can see that makes sense. If Pence ends up being, I can see that happening, but not if they're not reelected and Biden takes office. I don't see them. Nah, let it burn. (laughs) Okay, Usher. (laughs) Let it burn. And, uh, you know, hey, we ain't going to go through this shit no more. (laughs) And, 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 And that's that. And let's move. Let's fix the shit that I mean. You you can't fix the shit he's 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 messed up without. I mean, if you then pardon him, because then it makes it sends a signal that it's okay, as long as you're president, it's okay, and that's what he's been saying. I can't convict me because I'm president. I can't be convicted. I can't be on trial. I can't be. I can't do this because I'm president. I'm above the law, and that's the constant thing that's come down from the Supreme Court. No one is above the law. His taxes have to be are, are being turned over to um, New York State um, federal's uh, federal office. The, the it, it's being turned over because no one is above the law. So, look, I, I, um, is he is he the first is he the first president to operate under the notion that they are above the law? I doubt it. He's just the first dumb president to say it out loud. You can't make me believe that for what, 45, 
people before, 44 people before were given this job and they were altruistic and they didn't do some fuck shit. And they were like, eh, fuck you. Oh, I'm the president. You know, um, it just, he's just loud and messy with his shit. And in fact, as I say that out loud, that presents another angle to it. They may hang him out the dry just because he was loud and messy with the shit. Like, yo, bro, you got to shut up. Just like, you can't, I mean, you messing up doing dirt for the rest of us forever. You you shining a light on an office where a light should have never been shined on. He's already been, he's already been impeached. The only thing that hasn't happened is that he was thrown out of office. And had it not been for the Senate, he would have been. Yeah. The Republican Senate, I should say. He should have been. He would have been. But, I mean, cause, and that's the other thing that may happen. If, God forbid, if he is reelected, they flip the Senate and go, I, you did some more shit, impeach him and remove him. And he'll go kicking and screaming, but. It remains to be seen, right? Um, I mean, he'll be the, he would be the first to be removed. Okay. He's going to be the first something. <laughs> That motherfucker he, gonna be he first. He's gonna be he will be in the history books forever. Either the first he will get reelected and then snatched out of office and be the first actually removed from office, or the first actual president to <laughs> be convicted and jailed. Yeah, and they should put him in with the orangutans with his family so he could you know be welcome. <laughs> Getting that you don't really like him very much. I, I'm I'm getting an undertone of that. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I said, man. Um, speaking, of don't like real quick. Um, I have some sort of lopsided titty on my elbow <laughs> for some reason. I did some shit. <laughs> yeah. I, so I noticed this. I got up this morning and I know you know I was I rubbed my arm and I felt there was a little extra meat like a meat bubble on my left elbow. And I'm, and I'm checking the mail. I'm like, wait, 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 does it feel that way on my, on my right elbow? And I looked, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little, there's, there's some shit happening. And apparently I'm of the age where I don't remember what I did to myself <laughs> to have this happen. Like, did I, you know, so you always, I walk past the wall and I may nick something and forget about it. And don't, you know, you don't, I'm, I'm too concerned with whatever I'm doing at the moment. It's a, I, my, my elbow is fucking swollen. It's like, it's like a lopsided titty. Like it's, you see this shit? This is, it's not, it's not good. I so, say nobody's never seen a lopsided titty. You've seen a lopsided titty. I ain't the only one. <laughs> I actually was a lopsided titty for Halloween one year, but that's a different story. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> it seemed like the right thing to say at the time. Um, no, but here's the question. Here's the question. Did your wife get you back for something you did while you were sleeping? Uh, who knows? She, she may have. She has, and she denies it to this day. But early on, she, she I, I woke up in midair one night and hit the floor because she kicked me off the fucking bed. I was, I'm deep in my sleep, and our, I, I'm, I'm awakened by air. <laughs> <laughs> was, ah, bah, and I hit the floor, and I. Oh, now I'm fully awake. Like, what the fuck happened? And my wife is asleep. I believe she fucking kicked me ah, and lay back down and went back to sleep. She denies it to this day. I tell her, I, I still owe her. It's going to happen. I'm going to get her ass back. And I'll have one of them high platform beds. So it's a long fall. Oh, it's my God. Hilarious. Yeah. So <laughs> she preemptively got me for some shit that I said. <laughs> Years ago, and I'm doing Amen. some good. <laughs> I've told I'm get her. I told her I'm gonna get her. She ain't gonna know when. It's just gonna happen. <laughs> that revenge is a dish best served cold. Absolutely. 
Speaking of revenge and dishes being served cold, have you heard about this um, this sheriff in Florida? He Which was one? arrested for ordering the illegal arrest of his mistress. He arrested the side chick. Word. He had the side chick arrested. So um, he's a brother. Unfortunately, <laughs> hold on. We let's let's just go ahead and put his face up. Damn, it's a brother. Okay, all right. All right. So he's a brother, um, married, uh, oh. <laughs> had an affair with uh, one of his subordinates. <clears throat> he's a, he's the Clay County Sheriff. He's like the man, right? Had a had a relation uh, uh, an affair with one of his subordinates for a number of years. Um, don't know why he told his wife. He was like, "Eh, hey, you know." Uh, the wife got hot, called a side chick, and was like, "Bitch, I'm gonna kill you!" Right? So <laughs> it's already a hot mess. He goes to an event. He sees the side chick at the event. He pulls out of there. Side chick's following him. He calls his wife to tell his wife that the side chick is following him. What does the wife do? She gets in her car and follows the side chick. So now we got three cars <laughs> right down the road. He calls the police and says, hey, it's a, a suspicious car following me. I think it's a stalker or some shit. And the officer showed up and he was like demanded that she be arrested. Now he in trouble for that shit. It's like, a, I can't remember the exact charges, but it's like abuse of power and some other stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah. all of this is happening. And this is his big thing. It's just like, well, all of this is happening right before the election. I think it's dirty politics. Who said, who that? said that? The sheriff. The guy, the dude who <laughs> real wrong. <laughs> now he's trying to put it on dirty politics. Bruh. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So let's get it right. He had a side chick. Yes. Things don't go so well. He comes clean to the wife. Yes. Wife. Black, I'm, I'm assuming she's a black woman as well. Yeah. These are all black people. I phone up. All right. All my people. Um, the wife, as she should, well, I won't say as she should. I'm sure she should have slapped him, slapped him up first, and then go, hey, stay away from my husband or else you, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Side chick don't appreciate being dropped. She's still looking for her benefits and starts following him or whatever the case, and he calls it in. <sighs> had he not been a sheriff, had he not been a law off, you know, a, 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 a police officer if, uh, in any sort, any type of authority, it's genius. <laughs> get, your side, <laughs> get your side bitch arrested. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> Done. And how and how and 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 it it shows allegiance to your wife. Let your wife know I'm done with that. That was in the past. It was a mistake, baby. All I want is you. She rotting in jail somewhere. It's genius. But as a law, uh, you know, enforcement officer. Yeah, man, you tripping. <laughs> Wait, yeah. get up. that brother. So now she comes out. She gets now. So you lose it. You're losing your career. You're gonna lose out on some money. The wife is gonna leave because you lost out on your career and your money, and she gonna you know wind up with your best friend, somebody else. Gonna be smashing. Uh, you know, while. You, if he gets if he gets convicted and has to go to jail, oh boy, oh boy, he's gonna be some smashing going on and some side chicken going on. But oh, hey, yeah. what he think him and Bubba, he gonna you know he gonna have to give up some nihilators. Which one you think is more inconvenient, this shank <laughs> or this stick? <laughs> like, remember, remember, I want you. I like you. Now we can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> oh, salad, dude! You remember that shit? Yeah. Oh, come on, come 
Yeah, okay, okay. Salad tossing. I like you. I want you. <laughs> we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Yeah, no, that's 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 horrible. I mean, it's it's when when you are in, have a position of power, you know, of any sort, having a side piece may not necessarily be worth it. And unless all parties involved signed off on something. Especially if the side piece works for you. Yeah. Like, bro. Oh, and this, oh, because uh, you mentioned um, the wife going to leave him and be smashing one of his friends. Mm-hmm. So this is even worse. Side piece was married. Oh. He was friends with side piece husband. Was like a mentor to side piece husband. That's just dirty. It's just dirty. Filthy, dirty, dirty, dirty man. You're a dirty man. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that sounds like uh, karma whooping your ass because, you know, you was already wrong by you know, having a side piece in the first place. You was already wrong. Not that I'm passing judgment, but you already know what it is. And, well, <laughs> look, I ain't passing judgment, but you agreed to be monogamous and only be with one woman, right? Yeah. Whether I think you should have two or three women or not is irrelevant. You agree to a thing and you didn't do it. So <laughs> that's just I mean, what that is. Unless it was an actual love triangle and him, the wife and the side piece got down and then it just kind of went, uh, you know. You know, then them, them, that's them, a, them side pieces, that's just decisions. <laughs> it's called a damn good Friday night. <laughs> right. Yeah, man, I'm, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, I, I, that's pretty dirty. Um, I, the, years so, um, Simon Kyle. We, I think we talked about it before, but it was it didn't go that deep, but it was just as dirty. Apparently, when he when he got his friend's wife pregnant, they were like, I remember that, and I remember. Um, I think that happened when I was out in L.A. and we weren't we couldn't talk about it. Mm. it you, yeah, he was just like, "Don't talk about it. Leave it alone." And he really wouldn't talk about it. He was just like, "Nope." Yeah, yeah. That's that. So him, him breaking his back recently, maybe karma. Oh, I haven't heard about that. Oh, he was he was riding some bike of some sort, some moped or something like that, and got into an accident and broke his back. Had to get surgery and all that good shit. Yeah, that just happened. I don't know, maybe about a week and some change ago, less than a week ago. I did see a story about, and I didn't read it because I didn't care, but um, about um, uh, Kelly Clarkson replacing him. Mm. I didn't know what that was about. I was just like, oh, he's not doing the show anymore. He's known for that, leaving shows. It's called uh, That Bill Came (laughs) Due. Believe you could do all the dirt and all the stuff that you want. You can. You You are free to do it. At some point, in this life or the next, that bill come due. And so that's why I try to be a good person. Just in general. Um, broke his back in three places from a fall from an electric bike, missed injuring his spinal cord by a centimeter. Mm. Some of the other workers are trying out a powerful new electric bike and has to be pulling a willy. <laughs> he pulled a willy. <laughs> 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 now, I guess that's what his best friend's wife said. Mm-hmm. Pulled oh. a or she pulled a willy. Somebody pulled a willy. It was a baby made. Willy was pulled at some point in this uh, in this equation. Speaking of willy, okay, um, I, this is funny to me. So, um, Vice President uh, Pence is now trying to take on <laughs> he's trying to take on uh Kamala Harris and he's talking tough. <laughs> yeah, so I mean he is the he is the most swagless dude possible. But his, this is the shit he's he said um, this is what he said about Kamala. Senator Kamala Harris said she would change the dietary guidelines of this country to reduce the amount of red meat Americans can eat. Mm-hmm. Well, I got some red meat for you. 
We're not going to let Joe Biden and Kamala Harris cut America's meat. <laughs> We're going to do it instead. We will be the ones to handle your meat. If there's any meat handling or cutting to be done, President Trump and I will be the ones to touch you. That, that will <laughs> your meat. We'll handle it. <laughs> no one's going to stop you from putting meat in your mouth ever. Continue. He said, yeah. he said I got some red meat for. <laughs> He don't even know what he just said. That's the that's the other shit about it. He's he's completely oblivious. He's so on. He's he's just a non soul. He's just a soulless person. Damn. <laughs> he has no swag. No swag. No soul. No coolness or whatever. He refers to his wife as mother. That in itself. <laughs> so. Right. That's super fucking weird. Right. And now I remember being a, a young man in my 20s and I used to think it was sexy when a girl would say poppy or Ooh, daddy. After I became a father, that is the biggest ugh moment ever. So I don't understand how he'd been married for a minute and he calls his wife mother. Your mama and your wife ain't supposed to be in the same conversation. No. Not like that. And he's not talking to his kids. <laughs> you know, when you talk with your kids, you refer to your mate as how they, so they can relate to who you're talking. But that's not what I'm not calling her that. I can, I can say mommy. <laughs> can you imagine him saying, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> mother. You want red meat for dinner? <laughs> Kamala's talking about reducing the meat. What you think about that, mother? I got some meat. For you. I got some red meat. But yeah, he, his his head don't even swag like this. Like he's not even doing all this shit here. You know, you say some shit that. You say so, you know. You say some shit that's supposed to be a double entendre or some sort. You got a little, you know, a little inflection to your voice. No, he is the same robot <laughs> throughout the entire state, monotone as ghostly robot. Oh god, that's why Indiana hated him. Let's not forget that. I'm, I'm picking up that you you're a big fan of his. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> Could you not? Oh boy! I don't have anything nice to say about current the, the people in in power right now. I have nothing nice to say about them. Nothing. Clearly, you are not a fan. No oh, man. What's up? Oh, I meant I mentioned to you before we started recording. Uh, Ewan McGregor from Star Wars fame, played uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the, the prequel films. Mm -hmm. Getting divorced. He's joining Tracy Morgan and Dr. Dre. <clears throat> His wife's not bad looking. Uh, or his ex-wife, not bad looking. But they've been getting divorced since 2018, married 22 years. Of course, she's going after them pockets. Now, let me, I'm trying to just skip down to the point where we go through everything that she gets. Oh, boy. All right. According to the divorce judgment, the judge signed off on Ewan and Eve, uh, is his wife, their split of the property from their 22 marriage, or they'll split the property from their 22-year marriage, and they'll be splitting royalties and residuals from the projects Ewan worked on during the marriage. That includes four Star Wars movies. Uh... To give you some perspective, the three pre prequels each earned between six hundred and forty nine million to more than a billion dollars. Uh, but we don't know if he shares in that part of it, what his deal looks like. He did some other movies. 
Um, all right, here we go. According to the documents, Ewan will keep 30 vehicles. Now, why that motherfucker had 30 vehicles to begin with? I don't know. The brother, right? Huh? This the this brother? Nah, it's a white dude. I can't imagine why he would have 30 vehicles then. Well, they had more than 30. He keeps 30. She gets the $6.62 million LA uh, house. She keeps her jewelry, some bank accounts. She gets five vehicles. She'll also get over $500,000 in cash to even out the asset split. She'll get base child support of $14,934 a month and base spousal support of $35,868 a month. Plus, if he earns more money than usual in a given year, um, uh, the exes are sharing jointly, uh, plus additional kickers. Plus, she gets extra money if he earns more money in any given year after they're divorced. So she get a bonus for having been married to that motherfucker. Uh, they no, this is the part that that kind of blows my socks off, right? He's got to pay fourteen thousand dollars in child support. This is from T. It says it's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. It wasn't clear. Yeah. When you're looking at joint physical custody, don't understand that. He pays for the kid when the kid's with him, and he pays for the kid when the kid's with her. Plus, he's given her spousal support. Plus, she gets. 500 grand, five cars, $6.6 million house, and bonus money after they divorce if he come up on some big movies. But you know what? I bet he's still happy. (laughs) (laughs) If it costs that much to get rid of your ass, I have my sanity. (laughs) At that point, that's all that is. Like, all right, you can have it. Go ahead. Oh, like... I'm sorry, bro. I don't know what you can do to make me want to sign that deal. Like, I would have to catch you doing a three-way with my brother and my cousin and uh, uh, puppies in the bleachers watching. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like, as soon as I start doing the math, I'd be like, do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> we go stay married. You can do whatever you want. You tied up, you better stay tied up. Cause it's cheaper to keep. This is from T. It says, says, it's cheaper to keep her. Mm-hmm. Say what? It's cheaper to keep her. Woo. When you Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Them type of numbers, boy. <laughs> he getting the business. They're gonna be masked up waiting in the in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna call OJ. <laughs> OJ, you still working? Okay, I got a job for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, OJ, so uh your guy, who did that? <laughs> <laughs> and then OJ go, oh, oh yeah, I'll do I mean I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got I'll tell him. Yeah, 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 no problem. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. Jeez. <laughs> they were working on that for two years, and that's the deal they came up with? So wait, it wait, wait. Was probably were, way worse than that before. Oh, they were getting divorced for two years. Okay, I yeah. thought you said... We started in 2018. <sighs> God bless them. Ooh, boy. All right. On, on to a little, a, a little lighter. What do you think about this um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reboot that's apparently going to happen in development as we speak? Um, so maybe I was living under a rock in 2019 when that trailer uh, hit the web. And, and for everybody, so just, again, to provide context... Uh, Morgan Cooper, film director, back in 2019, 
um, had a kind of a reimagining of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air story. So he put together actually a very well made trailer for a drama version of it, and he called it Bel Air, right? Um, he put it out on the interwebs, it went viral, it um, got to the attention of Will Smith. Will Smith called him out to the house. They had a big meeting. Uh, and it looked like a pitch meeting. Will loved it. Uh, and then it just kind of went silent. And then what, last week, it mm-hmm. resurfaced and, and it looks like they're actually going to do it. I absolutely love this idea. It was, it looks so good. Really? Yeah. As a series? series? Maybe as a mini series. Maybe like, I don't think I could do more than 10 episodes. Anything more than that. The writing will get stale, right? It'll be them rehashing episode of ep- by episode of the comedy and making it dramatic and, and bringing nothing new to the table. So I think 10 episodes is a good number. Do it. Done. Walk away and put it in the history books. I think it should just be a, if it, if they're gonna do it like that, it should be a movie, a dramedy, a movie, and then keep it pushing. And 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 uh, Will Smith make a cameo, or each of the original actors that are still here, um, to make a cameo in, in the uh, in in the in the movie, and 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 shove off with it. I don't think we need this. I don't think we need another. I don't think we need a reboot of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Leave it. B, this you have so much to lose by trying to recreate lightning in a bottle. It was, I mean, it 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 worked. It was it was it was trailblazing. It 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 sparked the Hollywood career of Will Smith. Let it be. Leave it alone. We have our memories of memories of. I mean, come on. For that matter, where does it stop? We're gonna do a, a Martin reboot, a serious Martin reboot. Come on, man. Like no. No, we don't need this. Yeah. It's not a. It's, it's, I don't see a good look. I mean, some of the. I mean, some of the. Some of the stories were serious. I mean, Martin was silly all the time for the most part. There were some, you know, um, uh, episodes that were that tackled on some serious issues, as in, you know, um, police, um, police discrimination. You know, there was the the episode where where uh, Will and um, cousin Carlton got pulled over by police or when Will got shot, that was serious enough. Or the, the one that, you know, a lot of people remember when, when Will's father came to town and left without him. And the, the, you remember the, why you don't want me, man? <laughs> why you don't want me, man? <laughs> and we saw some <laughs> acting chops come from, from Will Smith from the first time. Um, we, that, come, we're going to expound on that now. No, leave it be. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I think they I think- do a pretty good job of of because under under the silliness of that story of, of the show, it was a pretty serious story. It was a pretty serious theme, right? Like this cat had to get out of Philly because he started some trouble. And and actually, that's when I watched the thing with Will Smith. That's actually what they're gonna do. They're not gonna start from where. Um, he's actually in LA. They're going to start back in Philly and really show the story of the trouble and and how all of that happened and what his life w- was like there. I mean, I, th- I think it's an interesting story to tell. I don't. I would not want to see it go past ten episodes, though. Uh, you know, I'd be interested to see what they do. I want to see it go past an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. And it's, it's got to be. It's got to be. You know. A, a, you, you take some of the things from from two episodes and you pop it in there and leave it be. I mean, if you want to do a sequel, okay, then we'll do a sequel and, and leave it. Like, I don't want to see a series of fresh, you know, of Bel Air. No, no, no. What I now just after you mentioned that episode, what I'm surprised I didn't see were um, gifs or memes of that scene with Will Smith played out uh, with the scenario of Jada and August Alcina. You don't want what? me, man. Why you don't want me? I, 
somebody did play with it. I, I, I'm just, I just have so much respect for, for Will Smith and what he's done for hip hop and Hollywood. I just won't acknowledge it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> you know I me, mean? and, and and you'll see. I believe you'll see August Alcina's uh, career disintegrate for forthgoing. He ain't got no chance. He ain't got no chance in music or film or anything. It's not going to happen. And it'll just I think be- the worst thing he could have done was put out that record with Rick Ross. Like, dude. He let- Rick Ross took it. He took it way far, man. Oh, he, man. And he's, like, he's jabbing little pokes and stuff. You know, it's, yeah, you know, that's, come on now. I mean, we're talking about somebody's wife here. There, there's some things that are off limits. And, we'll, and, and, and for Rick Ross, you ain't got nothing to do with that, bro. <laughs> Why take the stab? Why take the stab? Why do that? You know? He was trying to capitalize off the, the, what was happening. He was trying to get his name in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, I mean, people take, take Will for a joke. He from Philly. And I, I watched him slap a dude on the red carpet. I saw that. I was like, yo, what did the dude do? Um, to kiss him. He kissed him. That's right. He, he was like, what? It was a dude, a radio dude, a shock jock, if you will, called himself playing a prank and tried to kiss Will. And go, Owen. What do you think? I lost you. How about now? Is that any better? Yeah. Okay. As I was saying, I was saying. this is lighthearted Will Smith people, you know, who don't curse on his records. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Always smiling, good hearted dude or whatever, right? Slap the shit out of a dude. Play with him. Play with him. I don't think he's no punk at all, but no stretch of the imagination. And um, if you if you ever thought that because he did all of those movies that he can't rap no more, just hit YouTube and and look up some of the stuff he's been doing over the past like two three years. Just going, he still got bars. I like the, 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 he put on his son's the remix um what was the name of his record um uh the, the, mm. so whatever the delay was before it's back how about now you good now? Okay. He did a he he put a verse on um Jaden's um icon, icon living. I remember that. Yeah, killed, yeah. Killed that. Killed it. And he yeah. did and he, he jumped in the video and he's lighthearted. He's not a you know, he's not like a heavy dude, but I don't, you know, I you know, you don't mess with dude wife, man. That's you know. I've always liked and respected the guy, even like when when hip hop hip hop got real hard in like the late nineties two thousands, and people was like, "Oh, Will Smith, he's a sellout," and you know, they just didn't want to accept him in the culture anymore because he wasn't a hard dude. I would be the one to say, "Nah, dude's got bars. Go back to that first album. Go back to Rock the House." You know what I mean? The record. The only thing I held against um, Boom Shake the Room, I held that against him. I it didn't was- like. I- Terrible record. I, song. I didn't like the imagery, the video. He had the fatigue on. It was jamming. And it was it's like it was forced. And that's when I was like, come on, son. Like, yo, nah, man, that's not you. Don't do that. Don't do that. I liked you on your last album. You you saw my blinker bitch. I like that. That was funny. That record was amazing. <laughs> my blinker bitch. I, and that's the first time we heard Will Smith remotely curse on a record. <laughs> if I remember correctly, 
the way he did the verse, he was purposefully avoiding the curses. Yeah. Right. So he would rhyme and it would be natural that a curse word would go there and he would say something other than the curse word and go into the next the next stanza or the next bar or whatever. But um no, nah, dude, dude's super clever, man. It, you know. No. But to to some to, to close it out, we don't need a reboot of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. If a reunion of seeing where the characters would be now, I would love to see that. That'd be interesting. A one-off. A one-off. <laughs> or if you were going to reboot the series and kind of take it from, do like how, what's the, what's the show? Um, uh, um, Full, House, Full House did. Her house. And yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the kids grown with their own family now and, and, and all the things that they encounter. Yeah. After. Yeah. Okay, that would be, create. I would, I would like to see that. that. That would be the natural progression. You know, or even um, Boy Meets Girl. Boy, boy, which was the reboot of Boy Meets World. It took yep. Topanga, grown character, and some, you know, and yeah, let's do that. Don't judge me for watching Boy Meets World. I, I watched it as a kid. Look, and Topanga was a cutie, and her name was Topanga. Sounded yeah. very cool. as a kid for me. Topanga. So. <laughs> <laughs> You wanted to banga to panga? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I would another a reboot like that. No, we don't want to see that. I did I, you, what, reboots. I have enjoyed, and there were only one offs. Where the what, what they did the um, ABC Live um, with uh, the Jeffersons. That was amazing. Jeffersons, and they did a good times, and all in the family. I actually enjoyed those because they were one-offs. I don't want to see, and, and, and not only were they one-offs, they didn't rewrite anything. They took the actual script from the original show and just, just and did it. And it applied. That showed how timeless the show was. It applied to today. Like, they didn't have to change any names, anything. They kept it, at, you know, because some of it was very political. They kept it as, as it was. Didn't change a line. They, <laughs> even, when uh, what was what he said, nigga, please, or something like that. And one of the, they they let it go, they beeped it for live television. But you know, what I'm saying it, it, everything was as it was when it originally aired. I enjoyed that, and then I almost shed a tear when I when I saw Florence um, Mar- Marla yeah. Gibb, you know, make a, a a cameo on the show. I was just he's like, oh my god, this, I don't know why it affected me like that. I was like, yes. I did get emotional. I'm not going to lie. When I saw it, because I didn't see the good times one. I saw the um, All in the Family and the Jeffersons with Woody Harrelson reprising uh, uh, Carol O'Connor's role um, as Archie Bunker and and Jamie Foxx reprising the role of George Jefferson played by Sherman Hemsley. Um, They did a great job. And then when I saw her come out, I was just, I got emotional for some reason. It was just like, wow, you know, she still got it. You know, she's still doing it. And she's in her eighties at this point, Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but still was doing it, man. It was, it was fantastic to watch. I did enjoy that very, very much. I, I, I I'm, I'm I, and I'm dissecting myself. Why did, why was that? Why did that connect that way for me to, and for you as well? Why? When we saw Marla Gibbs pop up on the screen, why did that affect us so much? Because those shows meant a lot to us when we were younger. You know what I mean? And to see the original characters pull up. I mean, I didn't have that same, I didn't have that same um, reaction when I saw Jimmy Walker. <laughs> For whatever reason, I, I, he, he didn't have a cameo. They just had, to, they just had him pop up in between him and, um, uh, uh, um, oh my God, why well, can't I remember the sister name? Um, and my mom and my aunt grew up with her too. Um, um, that that played um, the sister to JJ. Thelma. Thelma. What is her name? Thelma was the business back in the day, bro. Her, and my mom, and my aunt came up together. You wouldn't even think she was from Brooklyn. She's from Brooklyn. They came up together. And Bernadette. I met Bernadette Stettis. Thank you. And. Um, 
So, you know, you know, you know your, your parents would tell you stories all while, while you're coming up or whatever. And my mom would tell me, my mom would tell me, my mom would tell me, hey, yeah, we, we know Thelma, best Bernadette. You know, we, 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 we were in dance class together. And, uh, we know and my aunt <laughs> said her breath used to stink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. But as a kid, you hear these stories coming up you know, as a kid, right? And I was like, ah, you know, you don't know. Okay, all right, whatever, whatever. Take it. And then as an adult, I'm working in, in, in New York radio. And she came to the station. And I was nervous to say, because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to find out that it wasn't true or they don't remember or whatever the case. But I was like, I don't know, I'll go for it. And I was like, um, I said, I think um, you, you may know my mom and, and, and my aunt. Uh, she said, who are they? I was, uh, they used to dance um, the, the Battle Sisters. And she lit up. Like, oh, yeah, Kathy, Christine, how, how are they? I was like, one, I was relieved. And then I was like, oh, wow, let's go. Hey, let me call her. And I called my mom and they talked old girlfriends. It was so cool. That is it cool. Really, it was really, really, really cool. I give yeah. me permission to share my screen. Which one is it? Uh, how do I do it? Hang on. Wait. There's a Teddy Riley moment. <laughs> All right, can you, uh, are you able to do it? Yes. <laughs> did I move it from the wrong screen? I did, hello, there we go. There she is though. Cover of Jet 1975. She was the business back in the day. She ain't too bad now. No, I I just Googled her. I was like, oh, okay. She ain't too bad. <laughs> I mean, like I said, let's go back 10 years ago. I met her. And uh, mom and, and her, they exchanged numbers or whatever. But, and that was kind of cool. <laughs> had I not had I not said anything about my mom, I probably could have got her my number, got got her number myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Look, man, I'm starting to see a trend with you. What's that? Kathy Sledge, Bernadette. <laughs> I think you might be into MILFs, bro. No, that's not that's not even that's not even no, that's not even MILF. No, nah, that's not even I nope, that's not even I can't even call it that. Cougars? Yeah, cougar. Uh, cougar would be 3040s. That's a cougar. That would probably be a cougar. Well, then I guess when you get to 50s, yeah. 60s, what is that? Uh, <laughs> Granny love. I mean, <laughs> oh, that don't even sound right. <laughs> That's kind of um, Look, Jurassic. It's not. No, it's not. Um, no, that's not. <laughs> that Jurassic acid. <laughs> Jurassic action. Nah, nah, just you know, just classic. Let's just call it classic. <laughs> Speaking of a classic, um, the lovely Halle Berry had a birthday. Um, what is it? Yesterday, August fourteenth. To, to blow the recording date for everybody that's listening and watching. And she tried to break the internet. Uh, Hallie ain't nothing to be playing with it, man. Cause she's 54 years old, dude. So she posted this picture of her on a skateboard in bikini bottoms with a t-shirt and her hair is <laughs> messy perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's a mess, but it's perfect at the same time. And she trying to break the internet, dude. Over 700,000 likes on this picture. And it's finna get 700,001 from me. 
<laughs> Good Lord. But I, I mean, you know what I know what I like and I respect it. Um, just not even on no lusting after her because still, you know, she's still fine and beautiful and all that kind of stuff. But she's showing that you can look great well into your 50s, 60s, and beyond. You know what I'm saying? Like she... What what uh Kathy said said uh, the body you want anybody you want you can have yeah. anybody you want like you know anybody. You want- well, I I saw that picture. You went out again. You still hear me? I can, but you get a weird kind of digital thing happening. Is that me? Oh, perfect. I mean, I do have that horrible internet service. Maybe it'll kick back in. But after I saw that picture, I I, I started uh, scrolling through her her Instagram. She's amazing. She looks fantastic. She has redefined what it means to look good in your 50s. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. No, she's... Uh... But she's... I think she'll forever be single. <laughs> she ain't trying to be... She ain't trying to be tied down with nobody. She got the baby. Like, I'm good now. I ain't trying to... She tried it a few times. It didn't work out. I don't want to say anything that uh, offends Miss Barry, just in case. Just you know, get a shot one day. <laughs> just to have coffee with her, just to have coffee, because you know that would be cool. <laughs> Sit and sip some coffee with a very beautiful, legendary woman in the game. Uh, that would be great, you know. So I'll keep it respectful. She has, she has Spartan abs. When was this picture posted? Eleven weeks ago. She has Spartan abs. It's insane. I'm sure she also has a trainer and time to work out. <laughs> sure. 100%. You know what I mean? I try not to get caught up in, like, when I see celebrities, like, and they're fit, you know, they're super fit and all this good stuff. And I'm like, damn, I could, we're close in age. I could look like that, too. I could. But there's some other factors. I, I, you know, I, I got to do it on my own. And then I got a bunch of other stuff, you know, happening in the house. No excuse. But, um, you know, it takes a little more willpower and time and, you know, to make it happen. You know. I, I was having that conversation with somebody not too long ago. And, I mean, the, the reality is their job is their body. Their exactly. looks. That's their job. So when they hit the gym, they working out, they're eating, they're at work. Um, but for the rest of us, like, I don't look at, I don't look at her, um, and say all women should look this way. This should be something to aspire to. I Uh just hats off whether it's with a trainer or not, you don't see 54 year olds walking around like that. Right. It's, it's rare. It's super rare. Even in the celebrity world, when they, they ain't looking like that. I might, I mean, I might put up with a level of crazy and just, yeah, okay. What you need, baby? All right, honey. Let me, (laughs) let me cook your dinner, rub your feet. I might do all of that for a little while. Good Lord. Um, since we on birthdays, um, the few coming up this week and, you know, I throw some out at you. All right. Um, the late Nipsey Hussle, birthday. Okay. Um, uh, actor, comedic actor Ben Affleck. JT Taylor of Coolin. Really? <laughs> comedic actor. No, Ben Affleck. Well, okay, not comedic. Okay, actor. I'll give him Affleck. No, I'm, I'm, I will give him comedy. I wouldn't give him actor. That's what I'm okay. saying. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Jay to cool in the gang, Steve Carell, comedic actor Steve Carell. You can't take away from Steve Carell. Um, I think he's 
pretty awesome, actually. I I've seen some of his more his um serious stuff too. He's he's good. I like him. Yeah, um, Donnie Wahlberg of New Kids in the Block. Um, um, okay. Um, Mark's brother, Marky's brother. <laughs> yeah, you would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Of De La Soul. Happy birthday. Happy born day, brother. Um, and whose birthday passed this week? Uh, Paz K birthday passed this week. You're supposed to have been on today. We got to get you back on here. We got to get you on here, sir. I'll call, I'll call him after when we get off of this and um, work out with the, the, the book him for the next time. So Maybe what we can do is just book him, cut that interview, and just splice it into the show. Into the, oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I did. Cause that. yeah, I mean, I got to put this shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you wash it first. <laughs> see, see, I, I, I made it happen. I'm a, I'm a married bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to terms with it. I am a married bachelor. I still do some bachelor shit. I'm a married man, so. It's not uncommon for me to throw back on a shirt that I wore uh, earlier in the week two or three times. Um, you, you're going to get no judgment from me, dude. Um, I think I wore pajama pants for three months uh, when we hit quarantine. <laughs> oh, man, you can't see what pants I'm wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Wearing pants is a good thing. That's 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 a step in the right direction. Like, I, I I I joke with my wife all the time. Like, I'm I'm not putting any pants on. She's like, you have to put your pants on. Okay, fine. <laughs> so I'll put the same ones. <laughs> what you should do is next time she says you have to put some pants on, like okay, and put them on your head. And just <laughs> you didn't say where I had to put them. Mm-mm-mm. Um, Sir Mix a Lot had a birthday last week. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And yeah. uh, Don Lewis from a different world. Yeah. yeah that's just the turned 59. Okay. Oh, Young Thug also. Birthday's coming up. Or Jeffrey Williams. He'll be 29 coming coming soon. Government name. Government name. It's government. Yeah. I got to figure out what to do about this titty on my elbow. So, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a trip because I don't know what I did. I, I You know, I'm not the only one. As I, it, that, that has to happen. You know, you get to, you get over get 40, 40. Shit happens. And I'm like, okay, did I hurt myself yesterday? I don't remember this. Why am I swollen up? Um, we, my wife and I, you know, we know. We know, we know, we know. Yeah. So. You know, man. The road to get fit, you know. I mean, I lost like 10 pounds. Nice. Is, yeah, yeah. I lost like about, about 10, 10, 10, 15 pounds. Um, let my scale tell it. I gained five last night. I don't know. <laughs> what you eat? <laughs> I think it's the scale. It's the, it ain't me. It's impossible. I didn't eat that much. No. Yeah, I gain them. No. All right, bro. Let's wrap. Leave some room in here to, to insert pause. Work. Folks, thanks for listening. Um, and if he shows up, thanks for Paz K. Thank you, Paz K, for showing up. Or... Hey, thanks for listening. Um, we appreciate you uh, subscribing to the podcast. Make sure you follow us on our social medias. That's at Unpoppin' Show, 1P, no G, Unpoppin' Show. Of course, our website is unpoppin.com where you can get all video and audio and extra shit. So, Yeah, some after the show content. We usually, when we sign off, we usually roll for a little bit longer, talk about some things we missed or, or whatever, but it's exclusive content to um, YouTube subscribers and people who visit the website. So hop on over there, Unpoppin' uh, Show. No, Unpoppin.com. 
to check it out. And like he said, on the, the social platforms at Unpoppin Show. If you happen to type in unpoppinshow.com, you still got us. <laughs> it's coming to us. Again, thanks for listening. And uh, until next time, peace. Peace. Need a daily dose of jokes? Like, subscribe, smash the notification button, and you'll get jokes in your inbox basically every week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we like cats. No, that's the wrong. God damn it.